Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener, your host, Ken Lane, here every week talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. The fall color is on. I mean, from Flagstaff and the White Mountains all the way down to the Verde River, Cottonwood, Camp Verde, and, and everything in all the Central Highlands, uh, color is showing up. So the, the raywood ash are in full purple. The reds you're singing. Uh, we've had flame maple, which is a sh- it's a shorter, looks like a Japanese maple, but it's a local native. So it's, it's, it's much more robust, takes full sun. It's been in color for over a month. It's now done. It's it's completely naked. Now it's the next wave will, will be the autumn blaze maples have now started to take off. So they're in full red right now. They're glorious. Right after that will be the October glory maples. Those show off in oranges. Those That's the sugar maple. That's when they make a syrup out of. It grows really well in the mountains of Arizona. It's a beautiful fall color, classic uh, maple leaf. Then it will go into your locust, which is this beautiful gold, very small leaf to it, uh, and, and all, way, it, wave after wave. It finally ends in about one month. We'll be done. It'll be the end of November, first part of December, and the last tree to turn red uh, in the year is going to be the flowering pears. So it'd be Bradford pear, aristocrat, all those ornamental pears. They don't actually put a pear on, but it's got the same pear leaf Pear flowers in spring, but it just doesn't fruit. And so you're seeing the color happening now. This is an absolute ideal time. Be planting your fall color. If you need some more trees, this is the time. Your garden centers have loaded up. So loaded up with, with fall colored trees because there's this demand. There's this this. This idea of going, wow, what is that? And then people bring pictures in. They got their phone out. They're going, I want one of these. What is this? Well, that's that's a maple. That's an ash. That's a locust. That's a whatever it is. Uh, aspens. The birch are just stunning right now. Gold colored with that white bark starting to that, that uh, paper bark. That's all white coming out. Birch does really well up here. So the fall color is on. I think after this week, Looks like we get our first real frost coming up, which we're right on track. Uh, that will really trigger the color. So you'll see that'll kill off all your summer blooming plants. Really watch your tomatoes, your watermelons. I mean, I've picked all those myself. The poblano peppers, they're off So because it looks like cold's coming. You could cover them with a, something breathable like burlap, a sheet, a towel, a box, something that breathes. Stay away from plastics because that holds cold in. But if you wanted to get through this next couple nights, uh, you could. But eventually, covering is just not enough. By when we start to get down into that 20 degree temperature, 28 degrees is the magic number. At 28, it just that cold permeates through the cold, through that uh, towel, through that burlap, and it just kills off that tomato that you're trying to ripen on the vine. There, it's probably best to pick those and ripen them up in the garage, inside, in your pantry, in in the house. Keep them from freezing. But this is the week when it looks like that's going to happen. Locally, now I know the Prescott area because that's where our family is. That's where I grew up. It's, It's where I've got my business. Our kids went to school here. It's where I went to college. This is my area. I know Prescott really well. The uh, the average f- first frost date is October 29th. And so we're right on track for that. It looks like we're right right there. So it's time. So we did get our light frost, I don't know, two, two weeks ago, but it didn't hit the entire area. It hit the higher elevations or that low, the low spots where cold air kind of settles again, but didn't get the entire area. It looks like this week, will be, it'll it'll definitely get a, a quick frost. So kind of watch that. Put it on your radar. Protect things. Bring things indoors if you want to save them uh, from, from being frosted. I would say things that have been planted that are used to cold, don't worry about them. So I just helping a customer they were putting, they've got big window boxes in front of their house. They're putting pansies, uh, giant jumbo uh, mammoth pansies, uh, some kales, just a mixture of this in, in this big 
big pot. She goes, oh, I, I think it's going to frost. So you, should I worry about them? I'm going, no. They like that. They'll actually bloom better if it's, it's cold. That, that's a good thing for them. Let them go. I wouldn't worry about them at all. And so and that's the advice I'd give you all as well. If you've got a new shrub that's been out there, lilacs or a new Indian hawthorn or a new pine tree or a new whatever, don't worry about them. Those things are made to grow in the mountains of Arizona, and they've acclimated. They've gotten used to. They're transitioning to that cold, so don't worry about them. Your deciduous things, things that lose their leaves in the fall of the year, those things are probably going to turn great color all after the, after this week. There's going to be tremendous color, and so you're 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 okay with that. Don't worry about covering it. It's it's healthy. It's good for it. Um, I was make, making a tour of the garden centers, and, and I'm finding a couple weird things. I saw Mondale pines or Goldwater pines. Uh, these are the pine trees that grow down in the valley, uh, the valley being uh, Phoenix, not Prescott Valley or Chino Valley. I guess there's lots of valleys. Huh? I should be more at the lower elevations where all the flatlanders live. They don't, they don't, they'll grow up here in God's country, but what happens is those desert varieties – They'll grow. They'll grow for about five to eight years. And then there's a rust that actually transfers from the local oak trees. And birds will pick it up on their feet, light on this this pine tree. And then the the tree starts to turn orange. So you really do not want to plant that variety of pine tree. If you're you're going to put some evergreens in, do your homework. Know who you're buying from and and really make sure that it's going to live for decades in your yard, not, not just a few years. That's one big mistake I've seen. That one end, people I actually found people selling Siberian elms. I mean, these weedy elms that just come up all over the place. They throw off seed that just make the whole yard trashy. Don't plant that in your yard. You don't want that. I can't believe someone's actually offering that up for sale in, in someone's yard. But you'll you'll find that at the contract grower places. Elms are okay. They do well here. You just don't want that Siberian elm or Chinese elm. You want a frontier elm or the Princeton elm. These are hybrids. They've actually bred the seed out of that so it doesn't put seed on. Uh, Frontier elm actually turns this beautiful red color, yet it's very robust, big shade tree. So So do your homework so you know what variety you really want to plant in your yard for not just longevity but for ease of care. Uh, in, in the yard. So that that's, I've just seen some weird things out there. Uh, grasses. You can still plant a lawn now. This is the peak season. If you need to overseed uh, or, or extend a lawn, now's the time. So March and October are your best months. I've, I've done it. I've overseeded or extended a lawn up until Thanksgiving. In fact, I put one on about 10 years ago, extended a lawn out, and then it snowed right after I put the seed on. By the time that snow had melted, all the seed had germinated, was coming up, and just green and lush. Oh, and it stayed green right through winter. Not just your mowing type of turf lawns, but you could also put your coral forester grass, muley grasses, your bunny grasses, the, the ornamental, pretty, decorative grasses. This is a good time to plant those in the yard. Now, most of those are perennials. That is, they'll keep their structure. They'll keep that green, but they'll finally start to fade, and they turn into this straw-colored type of texture. And then they'll hibernate underground, much like mums and galardias and echinaceas, all the other perennials, the plants that come back every year. They hibernate underground, and then starting like mums, shoot, you'll have that start blooming, not blooming, growing, By the end of February, first part of March, you'll see the green tuft coming back up and they start to grow. Same with rosemary. My rosemary will actually start blooming in March. It it just celebrates. After that harshest cold, it goes, oh, the days are getting longer. I'm going to bloom. And that's right when the bees, the honeybees are starting to come out going, wow, am I ever hungry? We've been hibernating for two, three months. What they start foraging and they love to go forage around my my rosemaries that are in bloom. You can plant. You can plant now. Just make sure you know the variety that you're planting, that it's right for the higher elevations. And then if you're planting, make sure that you water those things because the roots aren't fully rooted yet. They'll root out through the end of the year, but it'll take them a few months. It'll take this fall, the next spring, and then they'll be rooted. But you'll want to, to, to 
water that thing a couple times a month. Just deep soak it, even in January. And that will make for a tremendously happy plant that wakes up next spring with vigor. Be right back. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Some things are just better together. July is the best time to fertilize with all-purpose plant food from Waters. But pair the all-purpose with humic acid and it's a one-two punch of garden power. Humic acid gives your soil organic matter that helps plants roots receive water and nutrients. So it makes fertilizer work even better. Like salt and pepper. Coffee and donuts. And hey, you and me. Ah, thanks Ken. All-purpose plant food and humic acid, better together and only at Waters Garden Center. Hi, Ken with the Plants of the Week and our Fire Alarm Red Mums. With a name like Fire Alarm, you'd expect large red blooms that take a fire hose to put the glowing petals out. Just provide a little garden soil for a flaming red that will last and last. But wait, there's more. This Fire Alarm Mum comes back again for even bigger show next year and just three ninety nine. dollars Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. For people who love red mums, they love to shop. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. And we are back in the studio with Lisa Waters Lane. She comes each week with your garden questions. Just what are your neighbors talking about? We can learn a lot by just tuning in and... uh, you don't know the question to ask so many times the collective does <laughs> collective S- speaking in terms You've been of, watching of star, star trek star trek yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the borg we were uh, at the houseboat uh, on lake powell we took our church group up and showing them the lake and then we went over to antelope marina this is where the really big you know 100 110 120 foot boats <laughs> they're monsters they're not even our in our league and uh, a couple of them are Enterprise. Uh, well, there's one, one Enterprise and one Endeavor. Yeah. So, so a couple, yeah. Star Trek. There's a couple of Trekkies out there. <laughs> we're, our little boat is moored in uh, Wawi. That's where the <laughs> we're in the, the, the lesser, yeah, the, lower. the older older boats are. So not to put anyone that's let's tune in that has a boat yeah. in Wawi, but I'm not putting us down. I'm just oh, saying no, we're there. Antelope is a glorious place where... Some of those dollar boats had, are, but we looked. They have like sixteen berths or something. It was not crazy. Berths, sweets. sweets. <laughs> yeah, sixteen sweets. Like four eight thousand square feet. A boat with eight thousand yeah. feet. You've got to be kidding me. And where do you take that? I mean, Lake Powell is huge, and I know there's a lot. But wow, well, you have crazy. a captain drive it up for you. You have that kind of money. You have captains drive you up, and I guess so. I mean, we just had a customer. We were helping him out, and. Uh, they're, they're planting some stuff. Gardeners put it in, and they're they're about to leave for their six month cruise. <laughs> they're going to cruise the southern hemisphere. I mean, oh, wow! Nice. You mean you're going through the Panama? Oh no, we're south of that. No, no, no. Oh. Okay, just it's just fun cool. to listen to people's stories. See what they're oh, doing. No, What's no, up? No, no, no. Not putting anyone down. It's amazing. It's a good thing. This is garden questions though so before they leave on those cruise ships to get in that gig- ginormous uh, uh, cruise uh, houseboat mm-hmm. what are some questions they're asking maybe you should go there well you know we do have some questions that kind of relates to that so really? well walt wanted to know he's in the chino area he wanted to know what's the latest he could plant trees and shrubs yeah. but my other question along with that because i get this a lot people want to plant but oh we won't be here through the winter so they're, oh. they're summering down in phoenix or yeah. mexico or whatever so would you recommend someone plant this time of year if they don't have the ability to water through the winter there's a lot of second homes up here so the, the phoenix folks the, the palm springs the deserts they they summer up here mm-hmm. and then the folks from alaska and the north country they winter down here. What I tell folks and the clients I help out, if you got two homes, uh, plant for the season that you are here. Mm-hmm. Well, if if you if this is your summer home, I wouldn't plant now. Uh, I would wait, and I would come into the garden center when I finally got back up here in summer, and I would plant then, and I would look for the things that look great right then from late spring through fall, because that's when you're here. Right. But front load that. Who cares about the winter evergreens when you're never here? <laughs> uh, likewise, if you're from the colder country, Canada, 
uh, you know, Wyoming, lots of Indi- uh, uh, Idaho's, Alaska's. There's quite a number of folks. They winter down here. They get out of the cold. Mm-hmm. Well, that likewise, don't plant spring things. Uh, you'd now you'd plant now the summer. I mean, the winter evergreens, the fall colors, things that when the months that you're here, when are they the rock stars? Mm-hmm. You could you could cross over to you know maples because they got that great fall colored leaves. Then they got that great, really light gray bark, almost white. They're just beautiful with or without leaves. Aspens, of course, beautiful with or without leaves. And then, of course, you've got pines, spruce, fir, cotton. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can put in, but I would plant uh, for your season. Going back to the original question, yes, you can plant. Now, if this is your year-round home you just this is your only home and you go travel from here you take the motorhome out or you cruise or whatever your thing is um there i would say you can absolutely plant now it's it's a tremendous time to plant now especially things like fruit trees if you want fruit next year you need to plant them this this fall uh, they'll root out some, and then you can let them fruit up what the book says what the what the garden gurus say is that Fruit trees, you should not allow them to fruit the first year because they're either fruiting or they're rooting. And so you want to pick that fruit off that first year and let it fo- focus all that energy into the roots. Mm-hmm. You don't have you can ignore that rule if you're planting now because it's been they'll root out through the end of the year. They'll root out some more next spring, and then they'll they'll flower fruit, and you just let them load up, let them go. So and, and the other bit with that is. Make sure you're planting a tree that is of fruiting age. Mm -hmm. I've been touring the garden centers around, the the box stores, and there's lots of fruit trees that are whips. They're young trees. They're only two, three years old. The average fruit tree needs to be seven years old before it's mature enough to start fruiting. So not only plant it in the fall so you can have fruit next spring, but get the the age right. This would be a really good time in that same vein to plant lilacs. I was I was out trimming uh, some of the flowering mm-hmm. shrubs, and they're they're setting f- spring buds right now. If yeah. you put them in the ground now, they'll root out and they'll bloom much longer and with far more flowers next spring. Mm-hmm. Uh, McFarlands are red. You got your common uh, lilacs. There's, there's pinks out there. There's mm-hmm. all kinds of colors, but it's a good time to plant now uh, a lilac, a spirea. Three or four spireas. You you can't kill a spirea. They're short, little, frilly, pretty things that get about knee high. They just they bloom all spring and summer long, and, and animals don't eat that. Mm-hmm. They're deciduous, so lose their leaves, but they're they're rooting now and they're budding up, so you get better flowers next spring. And of course, all your winter evergreens. This is That's your true. time. We front loaded the entire garden centers. There's, there's hundreds mm-hmm. of them: spruce and pine and fir and hollies and camellias, all these evergreens, this is your season to plant those. So I over-explain that as always. <laughs> I don't know. I get on his no, track. No, I thought that was good because a lot of people ask me, you know, I'm planting, but I'm leaving, or can I still plant? I'm here. So there's a lot that goes into that. But yeah. I would say, come in and talk to us. Let us know your situation, and we can give you the right advice. If they are, if, if you're going to leave, you should, if you're going to plant now, it's a great time. Do it. I encourage it. But you will need to water those mm-hmm. through winter because we were so mild at this elevation, right. most elevations of Arizona, that the plants keep rooting. So they're using moisture. They're still they're putting leaf buds on. They're still using moisture. So you go out a couple times a month and hand water it, the, right. the brand new things. That, mm-hmm. That's enough to keep them healthy, keep the winter from freezing them to having damage. So. Okay. okay. Well, our next question is from Sue. She has lots of coleus and mandevias that she wants to bring inside. Yeah. Still doing okay. Wants to bring them inside to winter them over. Her question is, does she need to trim them back before she brings them in? And what kind of light do they need? And also watering. Do you need to water them as frequently? Yeah. No, you don't water them as frequently. They treat them like a house plant. When you bring them inside, they're now a house plant. So treat them as such. So like you're treating all your pothos, your your ficus, all those, treat them the same way. What is that? Maybe once a week, every 10 to 14 days you're watering them. Uh, it depends on how close they are to a heat source, you know, by the stove, by the, uh, you know, heating vents. They're going to take more water. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you can take, keep them away from that, that's better. Before you bring them indoors, going back to the original question, do I pr- prune them back? Right. Um, these things like coleus, 
they're five times the size of when you planted them. <laughs> they look innocent out in the yard. When you yeah. try to bring them inside, they take up a lot of real estate. Probably good to give them a haircut just so they don't take over the whole plant stand or the whole Arizona room or wherever. Mm -hmm. So trim them back. I would even treat them with a systemic granule. It's a, it's a bug treatment. You, you sprinkle on the soil, water it, water it in, and, and then it gets rid of the worms, the grubs, the mealybugs, the earwigs. There's some freaky things living in the soil. <laughs> you don't want to bring them in. You don't want them crawling <laughs> around the house because it's it's warm all of a sudden. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's one bit of advice. It looks like a quick storm's coming through mm -hmm. the, this next week. It's going to get into frost. So if those are out, uh, uh, if they're undercover, they're probably okay this week. Uh, but if they're out there uh, exposed, mm -hmm. they could get damaged or killed this week. Right. Now, same with your tomatoes. Same with the coleus. You had uh, what, mandevilla. mandevilla. Uh, those things you should probably get them inside right away. That yeah. way you don't have to worry about yeah. them freezing. And I would say that's true of succulents too. I would say all those things that are summer, summer blooming things, bring them indoors this week because they're about to be zipped. Plant your winter blooming things like pansies, snapdragons, all the things that like the cold. Can Elisa Lane and the Mountain Gardener be right back? You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. the Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. Oh no, my pine trees look terrible. Never fear, Plant Protector is here. Plant Protector? From Water Garden Center? My super strength protector destroys pine scale, bark beetle, and aphids. Just water into the soil and your trees are protected from the inside out for the year. Thank you, Plant Protector. You can always find Plant Protector at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Hi, Ken, with the Plants of the Week and our Ivory Feathers Pampas Grass. The most majestic of all grasses, this dwarf pampas grass blends perfectly into landscapes. In bloom at Waters now with long stalks of ivory plumes held tall above flowing green foliage that only grows head high. Much easier to maintain, this crop is the nicest you'll find in only $39.99. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love ivory grasses, they love to shop. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. You know, I had started the show out with... Uh... I've been making the rounds, looking at garden centers. What are they doing? What's the transition? Things are coming into pansies and the winter blooming stuff. Evergreens are, are showing up at garden centers and, and a lot of them. Uh, one, I was helping a customer. They, they wanted more Mexican heather. They came in. I want Mexican heather. It's glorious right now. But that, that particular plant is not a perennial. It's an annual. It looks really great, grows fast. Grows. It's a perennial down in Phoenix and Tucson, the deserts. But it's not a perennial up here. Here it freezes out. And so you really don't want to plant a, a Mexican heather. You'd be better off planting a mum. Mums kind of have that sort of look. And they do come back every year. You, that adds some color through the end of the year. It just, just looks good. Um, tomatoes, your basil, cilantro. Uh, those things, like we've got some basil, some cilantro here at Waters Garden Center. We don't have any tomatoes right now. We've got a lot of vegetables, but no summer vegetables. It's all winter, leafy. It's it's broccoli, cauliflower, uh, lettuce, spinach, Brussels sprouts. And you, you can go kale. You can go on and on. There's a lot of things you can grow and harvest right through winter, uh, especially at this 6,500, uh, 4,500 foot level. They're, they're so mild, you can just keep harvesting. Uh, but stay away from, if, if, you've, if you're finding some basil at the grocery store, it's got little pots there going, oh, don't take that home and try to plant it. It'll just vaporize in the next freeze that we have. That, they're made to be indoors on a, on, a, on a windowsill or something. Same with cilantro, the same way. You can plant, though, your rosemaries. Lavenders, they like the cold. Uh, your lettuce, as I mentioned, your spinach, those things can be planted right outdoors. Let it snow on them. They're happy. So there's some things you can plant. Just be careful what you're doing. Roses. 
had a customer coming in for roses, and now we've got a few leftover roses. I mean, not a lot, and it's okay to plant them now. I mean, they're heavily discounted. Go, please, we'd rather have these winter over in your yard than, than, than on our benches. Please take them home. Um, you'll get your best selection. It's not about planting a rose. It's about selection. You're usually collecting roses for their color or their fragrances. Well, I'll have a thousand roses to pick from by the end of April. I've got like five right now. So your choices are just very limited. You'd be better off planting an Indian hawthorn. It's an evergreen. I've got several varieties. They're budding up. They're very early spring bloomer, very pink, fragrant flower. You'd be better off planting that now rather than a rose. Um, crepe myrtles. Had someone come in for crepe myrtles, and I've, I've got a couple crepe myrtles. They're in fall color. They're looking kind of ragged, uh, but that's a summer blooming thing. You'd be better off waiting on those till next May or June. They'll be in full full bloom then. If you're going to think through a, a, a flowering shrub, you'd be better off planting a spring bloomer. It's a great time to plant viburnums. Viburnums are, you folks from the Midwest, you know what viburnums are. They're, they're robust, hardy, great fall color, tremendous fragrant blooms in spring, and just things don't eat them. Deer, javelina, rabbits, do not bother them. Uh, same with the lilacs. This is a great time to plant a lilac because they'll bloom. They're already, they've already set buds. You're seeing where the flowers are going to be. So it's a good time to put that in the ground, uh, keep it watered through winter, you know, a couple times a month, and then watch it just erupt. It kind of announces that spring is here with that fragrant, beautiful flower. Uh, spireas. Every yard should have a spirea, at least one. We've got uh, several varieties. I've got Anthony water in my own yard. It's a little knee-high, mounding shrub that animals, rabbits, deer, nothing eats this thing. It's so tough. It take, grows in the shade, grows in the sun. I mean, it's just really adapted to this area. It's deciduous. That it'll lose its leaves, but it just it's one of the first things that blooms next spring. You could plant now and have even more color by planting now than you would to wait until next spring or summer of next year. You'd be better off planting it now. You can do that. Just know which variety. I would say your tree, tree-wise, I really wouldn't plant a cottonwood, a willow, uh, some of your really big trees right now. Because sometimes if we go sub-zero, if it's a really cold winter, it could nip, it could take the tips off, it tip burns. But you'd be perfectly fine planting your medium-sized and smaller trees, your desert willows, the maples, the ash, the locusts, you know, those aspens. They love the cold. They love this the winter. They keep blooming, or they keep rooting, not blooming, uh, through winter. Uh, crab apples, you can plant those right now. And they would be ready. They're starting to bud up now with the leaves and with flower buds. They get that beautiful purple flower, reds, some of the brightest colors. So kind of kind of hold off. Do not plant citrus. This is all you folks from, de from the desert. Keep asking for citrus trees. They don't winter over here. It takes them out. But you can plant apples and pears and peaches and cherries and a whole bunch of other stuff. So kind of do your homework. Know what you can and can't do and, or or have a reputable garden center you're going to to check to make sure. Just because it's at a box store or warehouse someplace does not mean it'll actually winter over and thrive at this altitude. Sometimes they bring them in. They got the buyer that orders you know, 50 for every store from Tucson all, in all of Arizona. Well, that might not work so well in Flagstaff or Williams or Kingman or Prescott or Payson or, or this altitude. So with that, we got Lisa Watersling coming in with your garden questions. We'll be right back. The Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Hi, Ken, the plants of the week in our plumtastic muley grass. Glittering clouds of vivid purple plumes emerge in late summer and persist through the end of the year. It's a natural and showing off all its glory right now at the garden center. A superb hillside plant, especially when situated so that the plumtastic flowers are backlit by the Arizona sunset, all for just $36. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love plumtastic grass, they love to shop. Plants are a lot like puppies. They need care, water, and food. You wouldn't forget to feed your puppies. 
so don't forget to feed your plants. Water 7404 All-Purpose Plant Food is a gourmet meal for your plants. The only food for Arizona plants with the nutrients they need for big blooms, a hefty harvest, and tremendous trees, all naturally. It's time to feed your plants with 744 All-Purpose Plant Food from Waters Garden Center in Prescott. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. And we have one of the gals that uh, I just so enjoy uh, throughout my lifetime. She's made a difference in my life, Elisa Waters Lane. My gal, my favorite, my wife, my business partner, the... uh, This this segment's all for you, so I'm trying to set it up. In my head, it sounded really much better over the airwaves. It was good, honey. It was good. (laughs) Get brownie points. It sounded good. So anyway, this segment's... Uh, for Lisa, just getting a different perspective on gardening. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's just not uh, me coming through, talking through whatever is in my head. Which, which is scary. <laughs> scary stuff Anytime goes on Broadway in tunes going off in there. <laughs> you know, surprisingly true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you break into song frequently. So what is on your garden mind this week? Well, what's on my mind? So this week, um, I was thinking about porch pots. Now, a lot of people may not know what porch pots are, or they know them from where they've lived previously. So, especially on the East Coast, porch pots are very, very popular. But back there, um, they're pulling, they're cutting greens and stuff from their plants that are in their yard, or they're getting them from different places and, and putting together a pot by their front door that's decorative and interesting. The problem with that here is we're too warm for that. Because if we cut our greens and we throw them in a porch pot, they're going to be dried up and crispy. <laughs> Within a couple of weeks. <laughs> Within yeah. a couple of weeks. Just because we have no humidity, our days are still pretty warm and glorious. That's why we like living yeah. here. So when we think about porch pots here, um, we need to think about them a little differently. Now, in my mind, a porch pot is a, it's almost like a floral arrangement uh, that you're putting by your front door or entryway that's saying, hey, holidays are here. And the thing I like about porch pots is you can change them out seasonally, especially the, the uh, fall and then the Christmas ones. So we redid some pots on our front yard and I made a couple of them kind of just porch pots. So they're, because uh, I love fall. Fall is my time of year. It's glorious. It's wonderful. It's that beautiful. Is true. I love decorating for fall i like it more than christmas don't really tell anybody. sacrilege that's un-american <laughs> but i love decorating for fall so i took some of our pots that had the petunias and the vinca in it that were just they were still looking okay but i knew any day now this week they're gone they're, gonna be yeah, gone. they're all gone so i switched them out and i wanted to make them more decorative for for fall because we usually do thanksgiving at our house and we have events where people come over in that pot by your front door or your front entryway, it's it's the first thing your guests see, right? It kind of sets the tone for how you want your house to look and present your house. So just folks that are listening in, don't don't be deceived. She does not have a porch pot <laughs> by her front door. She has dozens of pots coming, greeting you as you get to the front. You're wading through containers. Not all of them are porch pots. Some of them are just winter blooming color. Mm -hmm. They'll look great, but you've actually accessorized several to to, to say, uh, you know, Thanksgiving is here, you know, Halloween's coming. That would be the difference. A porch pot is almost, it's a combination between a container and a floral arrangement. So you're kind of adding to it. So uh, a lot of our, I like something big and splashy in the middle. Um, You can use an ever small evergreen. You could use like the Alberta spruce in the center and then create your arrangement around it. Or what I also like is using things that are twiggy. So like the red twig dogwood. Oh yeah, sure. um, Has a beautiful red stem branching on it. Absolutely gorgeous. So you could throw that in your pot and then plant some pansies and ornamental kales around that. Um, I really love to go to, there's, you can buy inexpensive decorative 
little goodies anywhere, right? Little pumpkins. So for fall, I like pumpkins and kind of the fall leaf looking things. You're thinking from like the grocery store pumpkins. You could get real pumpkins or or you could go to like a Hobby Lobby or or a Joann's and get the, the, we call them permanent color. (laughs) Not artificial. They're permanent color. But throw some of those in there for your, for Thanksgiving, for fall, a nice burlap ribbon in there. It just really creates that whole look of a nice, it's almost an arrangement more than just a containerized plant. So as the gardens fade, and they are mm-hmm. definitely fading right now, this week they'll be obliterated. Many of the, the summer blooming annuals, right. the tomatoes, the squash, gone. they're all gone. Uh, so now we can dress those back up mm-hmm. and make it look like a holiday theme. Like, sure. oh, I've, I know your plants are dead, but look what I did. Look, at, this is all <laughs> we got it going on here. We're still right. we're still kicking that can, and, and uh, we've got yeah. more color than ever with evergreens oh, yeah. or decorative grasses or, or twiggy like the red right. twig dogwoods. The other one that's really, really pretty is the coral bark uh, Japanese maple. Oh, yeah. That's another one of my favorites. Sure. The, the branching on it, just the colder we get, the more red they become. That's true. Yeah. And just gorgeous. And just put some little battery up. Operated twinkle lights on there. So, so pretty. Uh, throw some twigs in there. Even if it's twigs from your own yard, maybe you have a, a willow or some like a curly willow or something that gives you interesting twigs. You could cut some of those and throw those in there. But the thing I love about our area is we can put the color in. So we can put pansies in. Yeah. We can put violas. We can put ornamental kale in. And they're going to look gorgeous all through the season. Whereas... Like back east, you can't. I mean, they might look good for a few weeks. The year, and then they're, they're gone. <laughs> it they're gets gone too, or cold too cold for them. Yeah. But here we can. And then once Christmas is over or Thanksgiving over, you want to pull those out. You pull them out and you still have a beautiful container because you have those pansies and you have the violas in there I as know well. I've seen you uh, spray paint pine cones, mm-hmm. like gold, silver. You'll just right. take ponderosa pine cones. Mm-hmm. And spray paint them, put them, put them in, just place yeah, them just in. Just throw I've seen a wire on the back of them. Twigs, and just spray them painted in. red, green. Mm-hmm. I mean, what? And just stick them in. Just right. a clump of. That's a truly a floral idea, a florist kind right. of idea. But that's your. That's how you made your way through college as that a florist. <laughs> I made my way. Yeah. But I think the thing is, people tend to get afraid of it. And and the great thing about it is, you don't. When you're using permanent things, little picks and that kind of stuff, you can always pull them out and yeah. plunk them back in until you get it the way you want it to look. Um, so you can have fun with it. I love the uh, front door. You've got uh, spiders, clip-on <laughs> spiders growing through the ivy. Going, right. That's a nice touch for Halloween. There mm-hmm. we go. <laughs> so, yeah, I like to change it out. So I'll keep the spiders on there through Halloween. But there's pumpkins and things yeah. out there. And as soon as Halloween's over, you pull the spiders and the weird stuff. And, and but gnomes. You, you do fall. And less gnomes. weird stuff. <laughs> That's where you do your pumpkins and your gourds yeah, 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 yeah. and your fall color in there. And then when Thanksgiving is over, I'll pull those all out. And you can put in, they make some amazing um, artificial poinsettias now that can be indoor, outdoor. It used to be, you know, if you were looking for artificial type plants, you couldn't put them outdoors because they would turn like this really weird, funky color. (laughs) Yeah, almost immediately it blew up a lavender color. (laughs) But they actually hold their color really well now. And there's a lot of ribbons that hold their color as well. It's funny, every year I can count on somebody trying to put fresh poinsettias outside. Outside, yeah. (laughs) Angel. That's you a Southern go, California it Phoenix is, thing. It yeah. is. It's like, oh no, that's not good. If but. if folks need help designing, mm-hmm. you can have them bring in their pot, and yeah. we, I, our staff, I and mean, you're out there helping people mm-hmm. put things together. Yeah. We don't have the picks so much, you yeah. know. That we're not making a Joanne run, but we yeah. can get the flower piece, the plant piece mm-hmm. done, and give you ideas of how to how to design. Right. You know what I'll do is I'll, I'll put together. Some photos of our our oh, containers and maybe some other stuff, and I'll, mm-hmm. I'll make a Pinterest board yeah. through our Waters uh, Garden Center page. Mm-hmm. I'll just make a board of porch pots, yeah. and then folks, and I'll I'll post that to our I don't know Facebook page or something. Aren't we doing I'll get a the word out. Too? We are. Yeah. Okay. So when is that? November. Uh, I have to get with Amy and Ken. The, the marketing okay. team and go. It's coming up in November. Oh, I don't stay quite. Tuned. I'm not ready to announce that <laughs> to the public yet. You uh, didn't hear that. I know. Just check in with us. We're, we're we'll let you know. We're contemplating an after-hour 
just fun get together byob bring a girlfriend a boyfriend yeah. whatever bring a friend and and we'll make porch pots together okay. uh if, to to take home mm-hmm. and and it's basically no charge just entry is is a bottle of something a soda or wine yeah, or whatever, whatever your plants you and whatever plant you purchase, you, you, you decorate with yeah. and that's it so okay. just purely to be fun although we've never done this before so i got to get the team uh, so check it's, back with us check the website we'll have yes. it on the website yep okay you bet yeah Great, great, great suggestions, Lisa. Great ideas for decorating your yard as the holiday season progresses. We'll be back with Ken and Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Hi, Ken, with the Plants of the Week and our Ivory Feathers Pampas Grass. The most majestic of all grasses, this dwarf pampas grass blends perfectly into landscapes. In bloom at waters now with long stalks of ivory plumes held tall above flowing green foliage that only grows head high. Much easier to maintain, this crop is the nicest you'll find and only $39.99. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love ivory grasses, they love to shop. Hi, Lisa here with the Plants of the Week and our Little Janie Gara. Little Janie is a charmer with flowers that float above this 15-inch plant. The fluorescent pink flowers will wow the hummingbirds with Janie's charm as well. Hummingbirds throughout the neighborhood will visit your plants. They're just so popular and only $14. She thrives in hot, dry gardens and only found at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Where people who love their native plants to be beautiful and hassle-free, they love to shop. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. And we are back in the studio. I've got a special guest on this segment. So John Murphy's a friend, local uh, uh, garden celebrity, local <laughs> just uh, brother that we've done some ministry stuff together with. Um, but he's got a special event coming up. And I thought, John, we need to get this word out. So it's promoting gardening and freshness and organics and and making people, getting people together. So welcome to the studio, John. Ken, it's a pleasure to be here. I uh, yeah. listen almost every week, and uh, I uh, I learn so much from you and your guests. So thank you for all you do for the community. Yeah, well, this is part of it. How do you get in part garden information? This the gardening at the mountains. This elevation can be a challenge. Absolutely. And so you are are put together the Make One Hundred Healthy Foundation. Yes, sir. And you are trying to get folks involved at all levels in gardening. So you you've done. How, tell us about that. How did you come up with this? Give us the backstory on that that maybe folks haven't heard before. Well, you know, thanks for asking because it's real interesting. You know, my main profession is longevity and helping people live a long life with health and vitality. And what I found was people didn't have the energy to actually follow through on making themselves healthy for the long term. And, and, and over and over again, it came down to a bad diet. Yeah, Our American diet today is full of, you know, high fructose corn syrup and, and a lot of bad stuff that amazingly, nine out of 10 Americans are micronutritionally deficient. We're eating a lot, but we're not getting the nutrition. Yeah. So I got into the Victory Garden because I wanted to help people live a long life healthy. And the best way to do that is to eat natural, organic fruits and vegetables. And that's how it all started. Boy, I tell you, you just... I just thinking about it. I picked a watermelon this week oh, and ate yeah. it from the garden. It was so good. I've got some tomatoes still coming off. Yeah. Uh, no, it's, it's nothing. It's, there's nothing quite as yeah. delicious as fresh grown fruits and vegetables. And, you know, that's really, if you think about it, uh, the event that we're talking about, our second annual Victory Garden Harvest Charity Dinner, happens every Veterans Day. And the reason that we selected Veterans Day is because, as you know, Victory Gardens were a patriotic duty in World War One and World War Two, and and the government act, actually asked people to grow their own home gardens to take the burden off the food supply yeah. and to diversify our food supply. God forbid we were ever attacked. The good news is we won the war. The program was successful. Um, everybody's grandma and grandpa had great fruits and vegetables. 
But then the war ended and we got into industrialized food production. And now we have a really bad food supply. And we really want to get people back to nature, to growing their own vegetables or buying locally. And so this dinner is all about celebrating gardening. And our grand mission, as you know, it's a big mission, uh, is to grow one million new uh, victory gardens in, in the U- U.S., across the country. And because I'm from Prescott, we started it right here. Yeah. We're up to about 1,070. So wow. we got a long way One to go. Year. But but, but wow. a year ago, we didn't have our logo. We didn't have yeah. anything. We had our first dinner. And you, uh, by the way, were the first person that, that gave us the opportunity to, to get it out to the community. So thank you. And I'm happy that the second one is going to be bigger and better. And we're having a it. A thousand at, or more. A thousand or I more. I mean, just, just triple that. Uh, exactly. Next exactly. Year, so. Exactly. And we're getting, we're teaching people how to garden. Uh, we're raising awareness of the importance of real nutrition and food. And that's real important. So we were lucky enough to hook up with Richard and Debbie Moranville from Goods from the Garden. Great and we're folks. having it yeah. there. And we're putting out an organic spread. Leslie from um, El Bell Ranch, she's donating uh, this beautiful grass-fed, free-range, antibiotic, anti-hormone-free beef. And uh, Johan Glidden's going to stop by. Uh, we've got great entertainment with the Peaceful Outlaws. And we're doing a silent auction, and we're going to have a tribute to our veterans. Because if it wasn't for the valiant men and women that gave us the victory and the freedom to have a victory garden, we wouldn't be here. But our real mission now is to rebrand the victory garden because the war is on our health and wellness and reducing obesity and diabetes. And that's why we're doing it. You know, it's an interesting thing. Back during the war, you know, this is the 50s and 60s. Uh, in the production, through the food chain, this is through your grocery stores, they had 130 to 140 different types of crops, different things they would grow and introduce and then sell locally mainly. And now we're down to about seven different crops. We've we've eliminated over 100 different varieties, and we wonder why we have gluten issues, all these different issues. It's because we're eating the same thing over and over and over with no diversity. The only way you can truly get that is to grow that yourself. Or, uh, or to buy from a local farmer's right, market. And, right. and, and listen to this. In, in our food supply, the average transportation is about 800 miles from harvest to getting on your plate to the grocery store. Spinach, for example, loses 70% of its micronutritional value in a week. So oftentimes, even people that are eating real food like spinach, yeah. they're only getting a fraction of what they would if they picked it and ate it. We won't even say about pineapples from Peru or Hawaii or, right, or, right. <laughs> or apples from you know, the other side of the hemisphere. So absolutely, this is great. So tell us about the event. Where is it going to be at? How do you get tickets? Okay. Where do you go? I mean, And then give us some highlights on the speakers. And we were trying to promote smart gardening and healthier living through this. Absolutely. Okay, so the event is on of Veterans Day, November 11th, from 5 to 9 p.m. at the Gateway Mall at the Goods for the Garden Event Center. It used to be a, a Mexican restaurant. Yeah, Macayos. Macayos. right there. And Richard and Deb uh, have taken it and making it an event center. It's great. Uh, we are featuring Karen Van Barneveld, who has a new documentary coming out called What the Food? Oh. WTF, What the Food and What the Food Film. And she talks about how real food and organic food helps people going through recovery from drugs and alcohol recover oh. better. Interesting. And we have Vicki Johnson, who owns the H2O Health Store. She's talking about how important it is to drink clean water and to hydrate. You know, so many people are dehydrated. They think they have the flu. They're just dehydrated. And I'll be speaking, too, about healthy longevity. And I've got a new guide out called The Seven Simple Habits on How to Unlock Your Energy. And it's all about common sense. Eat right, you know, exercise, move your body. And and one that is a little bit more on the spiritual side is to have an attitude of gratitude. For whatever you have, you be grateful. Guess what? That's one of the, the, the things that helps you live longer. So this event is a celebration of our mission to grow Victory Gardens. If you would like to join us, you can get tickets online at Victory Garden Harvest Dinner at a dot eventbrite.com or email me at john at make100healthy.com. We'll hook you up. Tickets are $50. We have a gourmet dinner. We have raffles, silent auction. George Morse is also a fellow brother. He is donating a airplane ride 
from oh, nice. Prescott to Sedona and back and breakfast with him. And uh, uh, Raskin Jewelers has donated jewelry. And so many local people are so supportive. I got to tell you, Ken, I love Prescott. And I'm so blessed to be here. And this is a great place to launch the Victory Garden mission. Now, Lisa and I, are just uh, the silent auction piece, I will personally give you a personal tour. I'll go out to someone's house and give them a guided wow. uh, design consult. Usually those go, I'll get two, 300 bucks for those, but I'll give you one of those. Thank you. Everyone write that up or whatever. Oh, yeah, Lisa and I will that, be at the dinner. So we're going to go. Well, you That's were fine, there last year, you, right? Yep. Hey, yep. So it was a great, talk, great event. Last year was a great event. We had yeah. Johan Glidden's uh, singing. We had stock, uh, Dr. Steve Brown. And, and the whole idea is to get people to realize that, you know, we think we might be eating good food, but, but unless you're eating locally grown food, or whether you grow it yourself or not, you're not getting the nutrition that you think you are. Freshness. It's, freshness. A, it's about freshness, not diversity. It's about having fresh from the gardens. I know Deb and, and uh, Richard Mandeville with the Goods from the Gardens, they are tremendous chefs. Unbelievable. But they're big on local, fresh, organic, and that's what that whole meal will be. Uh, they cater all of our events here at Waters Garden Center. They're just they're our go-to they're, they're people because they're so good. And you know, one of the farms that we, uh, we we actually donated to was Be Organic Farm in Chino Valley. They give away eighty percent of their food to the food pantries, shut-ins, so older folks. Sure. And so we donate. We actually the money we have raised so far, uh, we help actually help them pour the foundation of their cement for the greenhouse. Yeah. And, well, they were able to open up a double. Uh, their greenhouse production. Nice. And so we're putting the money back in the community. We also have a Gardeners of Destiny training program that teaches the next generation how to garden. So it's a awesome. good thing. So goods from the garden. Uh, where do they go for tickets one more time? Tell they them. can go to Harvest, uh, excuse me, Victory Garden Harvest Dinner dot eventbrite dot com or call me directly, John Murphy at 908 309 7046. Appreciate it, John. Thanks so much. We'll be back with more on The Mountain Gardener. You're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. If life is a bowl of cherries, why not make them the biggest, sweetest cherries ever? Waters Garden Center is super excited to introduce our new organic fruit and vegetable plant food. This fertilizer has the bonus of added calcium that gives fruit trees and veggies an extra boost to produce healthy, abundant crops. Feed your plants now to help them thrive and grow more fruits than ever in just $27 for a 20-pound bag. Save natural, organic, fruit and vegetable plant food only at Waters Garden Center. Oh no, my pine trees look terrible. Never fear, Plant Protector is here. Plant Protector? From Waters Garden Center? My super strength protector destroys pine scale, bark beetle, and aphids. Just water into the soil and your trees are protected from the inside out for the year. Thank you, Plant Protector. You can always find Plant Protector at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lang. One bit of advice I can give you. Here's some things that I'm doing in my own yard. Uh, here, I live in Prescott, so up above the high school in the heart of town. And some things that I'm doing in my yard, I'm trying to clean up things as the asters have been in full color, full bloom. They're starting to fade. I just trim them back because they're kind of that dead thing coming up in the middle of the garden. It doesn't look so good. So I take the head shears and trim them back. Uh, another thing that I'm doing is I'm strategically planning what I'm going to add to my landscape, uh, to my gardens next spring. So uh, manures, I'm thinking manure, mulch, compost, topsoils. Um, if you need to add some th some extra soil to freshen up your soil next spring, and, and all of us should, if you're growing vegetables, if you've got container gardens, you've got raised beds, you need to add some fresh potting soil. Uh, at the very least, I, I top dress with some shredded bark. So I'm, I'm buying those now in my garden, and then I'm putting those, I'm going to store them on top of my irrigation box. 
I don't want those valves to freeze. And so uh, we make our own compost. We make our own topsoil. Make our, we've got our own recipe for potting soil. It's, it's for, for local growing uh, in containers and raised beds. Um, I know I'm going to use some. I use a lot of it. And, and it's in a tan-colored bag, so it just blends right in. I put it with the logo down, so it's just a, just a brown bag. And I use it as a huge pillow to, to uh, keep the cold out of my irrigation box. And I've got one, two, three, four of them. So from the backyard to the front yard, yes, I have a lot of plants. I have a lot of valves. I've got a lot of if – it's, if, it's, if it could possibly freeze, I put a bag over it. And that's one bit of advice I can give to you. Um, that, and if you're on a well – these folks, I'm talking about those out in the county. You're, you've got your own own well out there. Um, I would say now is the time to power up that insulation tape, the heat tapes, to make sure the, the well house is buttoned up because we're going to get cold. Um, I, I've plugged in my heat lamp and and heat tapes on mine. So it just had been unplugged all, all season. All of a sudden, it looks like this next week. It could get cold. And no, your well house is not going to freeze with one event as it gets colder and it starts to permeate than it does. But I want to be prepared. I want to be ready. I don't want to have to think about it and go, oh, oh my gosh, it's going to be 21 tonight. Uh, I should, yeah, I should do this. So I just get it done, get it out of the way. So some things to really watch. And then I planted some of my violas and pansies, kales last week. It is so fun. They've already like 25% larger. I mean, they're noticeably Larger, they just went. Oh, the weather's so great! Whoop! And they just plump right up. You do want to get that colored stuff in the ground. You want to plant those while you still have some warm soil. And and frost does not matter to those things. Even even snow freezes. They like that. Uh, but you want you want to get them in so the while the soil is warm, so they got time to root out and fill in. So they're more glorious. They have more bulk. They're more vigor to them. And they're more impressive. Now, if you wait until the middle of November Thanksgiving, now all of a sudden the, the, the soil starts to cool down and they won't die, but they won't grow that much either. So um, what I'm hoping for your gardens this week is this cold front coming through obliterates your summer blooming plants. So you've got to make the hard call going, either I pull these dead things out because this cold will take them. And I have to decide, do I want to plant some more? Do I want some winter blooming things? Or do I just want to clean it up and look at empty pots or empty soil for the rest of the winter? So don't wait. Don't wait till it gets too too cold to plant those things. They'll do fine, but it's better to, to go for it early. Ken and Lisa Lane and the Mountain Gardeners, we hang out throughout the week here at Waters Garden Center, and we love talking to fans of the show. Hi, Ken, with the Plants of the Week and our Fire Alarm Red Mums. With a name like Fire Alarm, you'd expect large red blooms that take a fire hose to put the glowing petals out. Just provide a little garden soil for a flaming red that will last and last. But wait, there's more. This Fire Alarm Mum comes back again for even bigger show next year and just $3.99. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, where people who love red mums, they love to shop. Hi, Lisa with the finds of the week and our Forester Feather Grass. Dramatic bronze flower spikes start blooming in early summer and don't stop until well into next year. The flowers are so light and airy, it's often referred to as feather grass. Growing to just hip high, this dainty grass shows off enough to make a designer statement without being invasive. All for under $30. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Where people who love really pretty grass, they love to shop. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.